Я просто мобилизованный. Вы посмотрите, какие ублюдки, когда мы там воюем, да, когда мы гнием в окопах. Они, сука, носят на жопе 23 миллиона. Ты когда-нибудь видела 23 миллиона э, рублей на попе? Товарищ Путин, товарищ Шойгу, блядь, это как понимать? Мы что, за этих пи***сов тут, сука, сука, в окопах сидим, блядь? Yeah, guys, the reality of modern Russia is just absolutely hilarious, isn't it? What is up everybody, it is your boy Roman, your favorite neighborhood Russian and in today's video guys we are gonna be talking about probably the most ridiculous story that came out of Russia in the recent times and I am of course talking about the infamous almost naked party thrown by a very famous Russian influencer Nasty Ivleva which started like pretty much any other massive celebrity party but ended up in repressions and cancellations against the artists and Russian celebrities that took part in this party because this party turned out to be not conservative and traditional enough for Russia and also how dare these celebrities party while our boys are dying on the front line to defend Russia and there's been basically an insane circus going around this party for the past two weeks or so where everybody who was associated with this party in any way is getting their career absolutely destroyed and a lot of these people happen to be very very z so it's all very ironic and it's all very funny to see and that is exactly why I want to talk about it so, essentially what happened is that on the 21st of December of 2023, Nastya Ivleva, one of the biggest and most famous Russian influencers, organized a private party for a bunch of Russian celebrities under the almost naked dress code. <laughs> the party took place in the Moscow club Mutabor, I've actually been there. The party was invitation only or you could buy a ticket to attend the party for $11,000. Yes guys, this is how people in Moscow live by the way. They live in a completely different reality from the rest of Russia. Especially when we talk about Moscow influencers. <laughs> And basically what happened is that a ton of Russian celebrities visited this party. Some of the most famous Russian celebrities that were noticed at this party included Ksenia Sapchak, a Russian journalist and the goddaughter of Vladimir Putin. By the way, she's the only person that's not facing any repercussions for attending this party right now. I wonder why. Then we have some famous Russian singers like Filip Kirkorov, who's by the way a closeted gay man and everybody in Russia knows he's gay, yet this guy supports Russia's conservative values and Z and you know the special operation and everything. Other artists included Lalita Milyavskaya, originally born in Ukraine by the way, very Z, Dima Bilan, Drigan, Anna Asti, another singer that's originally born in Ukraine, and of course Nasty Ivleva herself, who showed up to the party wearing a bikini with a thong that literally had a gem worth millions and millions of dollars on her butts. So yes, once again guys, people in Russia are working for $300 per month, somebody's sitting in the trenches in Ukraine, meanwhile, influencers in Moscow are wearing 20 million rubles on their ass. Hey yo, what the fuck? <laughs> this is what modern Russia is all about. So obviously this entire story caused huge drama and huge buzz in the Russian media, but I'm actually pretty interested in what the West has been saying about this story and in order to do that, I'm going to use ground news. Ground News is the ultimate news comparison platform that allows you to not only compare the news from all around the world from different sides, but also to keep your own biases in check. Here I am on the Ground website on an article about Russian star semi-naked party sparking wartime backlash, and Ground News here shows me that there's a total of 163 news sources that reported on this topic, so it seems like this party was a big deal in the West as well. And I can actually go down here and look at every individual source that reported on this topic and every single source is sorted according to their factuality, their ownership and also their political leaning. One feature that I personally love is Bias Insights, which actually gives me a summary of what different sides of the media have been saying about a certain issue. So the left mainly emphasized the controversy around the party using loaded language and politicized opinions, while the center focused on conservative viewpoints, criticized the party for promoting debauchery, drug culture and the LGBT lifestyle, and the right was more of the same but also talks about the public apologies from attendees and a 1 billion ruble lawsuit seeking moral damages. And I personally love using Ground News because Ground News is just a great tool that allows you to not only stay informed but also to know where your news are coming from and the agenda behind it. Go over to the link down in the description to ground.news slash nfkrz and get 30% off of the Vantage plan with unlimited access, which is exactly what I have, which comes out to about $5 a month. Once again, that is ground.news slash nfkrz. Huge thanks to Ground News for sponsoring this video and let's get back into it. 
So, the party took place and videos from the party were actually posted officially by everybody who attends it, so this is not like leaks or anything. And essentially, as soon as this happens, a massive shit wave hit Nasty Evleva, the influencer that organized the party, and all the other Russian celebrities that attend it. Originally, it actually all started with Russian soldiers recording a special message to the Russian government saying that It's ridiculous that we're fighting for the country out here and these rich influencers are partying out there. It's no time to party. Не время улыбаться. В настоящее время гибнут наши боевые товарищи, также получают ранения, защищая интересы нашего государства. В это время представители шоу-бизнеса отвращают нашу молодежь, показывая нецензурные ролики. The higher-ups in the government apparently noticed this negative reaction and decided to take action against Nasty Ivleyeva and her terrible party that's destroying the traditional values of Russia. First of all, Anastasia Ivleyeva was fined 100,000 rubles for propaganda of non-traditional sexual relations. Yes, guys, Russia banned LGBT propaganda recently, so apparently now a bunch of people being naked in a club somehow essentially counts as LGBT propaganda. Another partygoer that immediately felt the fist of Russian justice was the Russian rapper Vasyo, who actually came to the party wearing nothing but trainers and a sock over his penis. Yes, literally, and he was recorded wearing that outfit and everything, and the Russian government also fined this guy 100,000 rubles for LGBT propaganda once again, and put him in prison for 15 days for a uh, hooliganism. So that already seemed pretty ridiculous, but basically this was just the start. Essentially, Russian propaganda, Z Telegram channels, Z people, everybody started talking about this party and how terrible it is, how Russia allows this, you know, liberal degeneracy to be happening in the center of Moscow, while we're defending traditional values on the battlefield. Not even mentioning the fact that this right here is nothing new for Moscow and for Russia. Russia has had very not safe for work, parties, music videos, celebrity appearances for ages now, and this was never an issue. But basically all of this ended up in a massive campaign by the Russian government to destroy the people that took part in this party. So Nasty Ivleva, the organizer of the party, is apparently currently facing a class action lawsuit for the sum of 1 billion rubles for essentially LGBT LGBT propaganda and discredits in Russia, whatever. We need to collect 1 million rubles in terms of compensation for moral damage to people who participated in the group of the group, and also millions of Russian citizens who suffered as a result of this horrific event. Also, the Russian tax service has said that Ivleva will be now checked very thoroughly for any unpaid taxes, and also some of the largest Russian brands, MTS, which is a huge carrier in Russia, a mobile carrier, one of the biggest ones, and the bank Tinkoff, basically stopped stopped working with Ivleva. She was actually their official ambassador, so to say. So, also currently the club that actually was the place where this party was is also facing a possible visit from the government allowing possible LGBT propaganda. And the club is also asking like 90 million rubles or something from Ivleva, essentially for damages caused by this party. So, she's fucked. Like, it's crazy. She's already released like three different apology videos, each like 20 minutes long, in which she's basically like crying and saying how, you know, what a terrible thing she did, you know, that she decided to party during such a terrible time and whatever the fuck. Which is like actually hilarious because most people in Russia, especially young people that follow Ivleva, they don't give a shit. This is like normal Western stuff to them. The only people that are mad about this currently are like Z retards that are basically just, you know, live in a parallel universe where they think that all Russians, everybody's like very supportive of this, you know, special operation and that everybody has to work for the victory and we have to, you know, just stop living, we have to do everything for the victory, everything for the front. This is like World War II, you guys. The reality in Russia is that nobody fucking cares and everybody wants to keep living their lives. And this entire cancel campaign is literally not even coming from the Russian people. It's coming from the Russian government. Like, in Russia, you get cancelled by the government too. <laughs> Which is kind of hilarious, isn't it? Especially considering how, once again, like I said, a ton of these celebrities that ended up visiting this party are actually very Z, and they have been trying their hardest in the last two years to basically show their loyalty to the Russian regime, and yet, after this one fuck up, Russia doesn't care about them anymore. For example, Filip Kirkorov. Like I already said, once again, huge pop star in Russia for decades. He's known to be a closeted gay man, and yet, he supports all of Russia's repressions against LGBT. He supports the special operation. Я держу путь в Крым. Я так хочу увидеть все крымчан. Но особенно буду ждать всех наших героев. 
And yet, after this party, what has happened is that Filip Kirkorov is getting his concerts cancelled, he's literally being cut out of movies where he's already starred in. For example, there's currently a movie production in Russia where Filip Kirkorov was one of the main actors and they replaced him with another actor now after this. The same thing is happening to Alita Milavskaya, for example, another famous singer in Russia who is actually originally from Ukraine, and she also tried very hard to, you know, show that she's Z and that she's loyal to the government. What the center of the Kiev, my mom. And she's getting cancelled anyway. I mean, it is just absolutely poetic. Because it shows you that even if you try to suck up to the Russian governments, even if you like repeat all of their propaganda, if you try to show your loyalty, they will get rid of you and they will destroy you once you're not useful anymore. And every single celebrity also films their own version of an apology video essentially saying that we are very sorry for taking part in such a terrible event while, you know, our boys are dying on the front for us or whatever. And some even claim that they ended up at the party by accident and that they did not know what they were getting into, basically. О характере событий, которые будут происходить за и ушел. I mean, it's a fucking shit show. Like, oh my god. And another insane story that is also currently going around after this party is that Anna Asti, once again, like I said, a singer originally from Ukraine who is very popular in Russia, who actually got a Russian citizenship not that long ago. Apparently, currently, there's some discussion of uh, possibly taking away her Russian citizenship because she took part in this party. So it's fucking crazy. Now, what do you even have to say about this? Uh, once again, this just shows us, first of all, the absolute insane, like, discrepancy, inequality in the Russian society currently where a lot of people in Russia right now are probably going through their toughest times in a while. A lot of people have been mobilized and are like sitting in trenches right now. Meanwhile, Moscow is partying like crazy. It seems like life in Moscow actually became like more richer than it was before the war. All of these sellout celebrities that bootleg the governments are having fun, eating caviar, wearing fucking gems on their ass that are worth 20 million rubles. And here's the thing guys gotta understand. I have contempt for these people not because they're rich, or especially not because they're partying during the time of war or whatever, right? The problem is that, first of all, these people are Z. Most of them are either Z or completely silent. So these people essentially allow the Russian government to continue doing what they're doing, and these people are complicit. They believe that they will be able to continue living their rich life and earn money as long as they show loyalty to the Russian government. And I just don't really have a lot of sympathy for like Z propaganda spokespeople, you know? But also, once again, there have been parties like this in Russia before. This is nothing new. Russia is not like a conservative society. It's the same as like America or whatever. You gotta realize that, right? Like, seeing this doesn't make Russians get a fucking heart attack. Nobody genuinely gives a shit. And also the whole point about how dare you party while our boys are down on the front line? Well, they're your boys. They're not my boys. You know what I mean? First of all, the idea that you have to, like, stop partying or enjoying life if there's any war going on. Dude, do you think people in Ukraine don't have parties or something right now? They do. The premise of, like, this party being offensive to Russia because our boys are dying on the front line is, like, a viewpoint that literally only Z propaganda the mouthpieces have. It's just the viewpoint of some bottom gutter like Z Telegram channel reading looking ass, you know? Like nobody genuinely gives a fuck. So in my opinion, there is nothing immoral about this party being thrown. Because while well, these boys that are, you know, in the trenches, they don't really have to be there in the first place, you know? It's like, I mean, you kind of brought it on yourself, Russia. Like, come the fuck on. It's just obvious to me that the Russian government has used this policy, has used this moment to sort of try to give the voice to the very hyper-patriotic crowd in Russia, to the very hardcore Z supporters that are, you know, against the Western degeneracy and against any celebrations in the times of war. And also they're using this event to basically continue destroying the LGBT community in Russia, to only bring more terror into, like, the influencers and famous people of Russia so that they know that they have to never step out of line, etc. And once again, I just find it absolutely poetic. That the same exact people who receive money and who advertise the Russian regime and who zombify the Russian populace are now getting fucked by the Russian government for, you know, not being Z enough, essentially. I mean, <laughs> it's glorious.
And obviously Russia kind of wants to just further promote, you know, the entire traditional values grift that they have going on because Russia is not that traditional. Nobody actually gives a shit. If this would have happened in 2021, nobody would have bat an eye. And yeah, I mean, I didn't even know what to say. It's just absolutely fucking ridiculous. Like, I follow news coming out of Russia, you know, whatever's going on to celebrities, how Russian celebrities are getting their concerts canceled because they oppose the war and whatnot, right? But this, like, what the fuck? Like, what the actual fuck? is happening. Like, this is clownery. <laughs> this is not a country, this is a whole ass circus. Oh my god, this is just so fucking stupid. <laughs> But yeah, guys, what do I have to say? Here we are once again, talking about Russia, you know, as Western Red Pillars like to say, one of the most free countries in the world. Yes, I agree. This is one of the most free countries in the world where having a fucking private party with a little bit of a zesty dress code gets you cancelled and uh, possibly facing uh, prison time. Yes, I agree. The most free country ever, dude. So fucking true. I'm so depressed, dude. <laughs> this is fucking stupid. So yeah, guys, what can I say? I suggest you guys draw your own conclusions, you know, looking at cases like this it is up to you guys to decide if you want to move to russia right now or not because it's you know obviously the most free country ever totally but i hope you enjoyed this video anyway uh if you did enjoy it then please make sure to slap the motherfucking like button and as always guys if you would like to support me additionally support me financially then you can go over to the link down in the description and become a youtube member it's basically like the best way to support me it's like a youtube's own version of patreon a monthly donation or if you want to do a one-time thing you can use super thanks underneath this video but yeah guys, thank you so much for watching today's video, watch out what kind of parties you guys go to, and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.